right uh, in the 18th one they are asking a uniform door of pw is supported by two hinges right okay x and y x and y are a vertical distance l apart as shown here we have the diagram right here state the conditions needed uh, for the door to be in equilibrium right we have two conditions what first one is net resultant force should be zero right so no resultant force no resultant force other one is net resultant moment should be zero around about any point right no resultant moment moment about any point right so two marks one for this one one for this one right here i'll give the meaning of the term center of gravity right what is center of gravity it is the point at which the weight of an object considered to act right you have to mention that term. always keep that in your mind what the point at which the weight of an object considered to act right the point at the point at which weight of an object object right is considered to act is considered to act one more right here the diagram shows the force acting on the door at each hinge here we have diagram the mass of the door is 14.4 kilograms the weight of the door causes a moment about each hinge show that the horizontal component of the force of hinge y on the door is about 40 newtons right here first thing you have to make this diagram much more clear so here's the weight right force of weight acting from the center of gravity right and they're asking us this force the horizontal one oh, I can't can see all right horizontal one right okay then if you want to find this force right let's call it f h f h and here it is weight w so you need to take moments around x y the door is in equilibrium so it should be balanced the clockwise moment should be equal to anti-clockwise moment y the door is in equilibrium so we have two pivots over here x and y if you want to find the force acting on uh, y to the horizontal direction we need to take the uh, moments around the point x so they have given this distance right we need to find this distance what the distance to the force of line right line of force right here's the line of force and the perpendicular distance right here uh, it is L they have given it and here can have the same distance. it is W over 2 right if you consider this one with the previous diagram you can easily uh, take these values and they have given what W and L so I'm going to write my equation what is it right my equation will be uh, first thing what I have to do here is they have given the mass so I have to calculate the weight right okay so here I, uh, if I make it to here you can't see it so I'm going to make my calculation over here right uh, w equals mg so it is 14.4 kilograms times 9.81 uh, newtons per kilogram right so if you calculate this one what you will get here is 141 newtons right now you can consider the uh, moments around point x so uh, first i'm going to write what uh, anti-clockwise sorry clockwise moments here w will supply a clockwise moment here and fh will supply a anti-clockwise moment so w w they have uh, we have already calculated it is 141 newtons and the distance to the force of line it is w over 2 they have given w is 0 0.85 meters right so it is 0 0.85 meters over 2 this is what we call clockwise moment and this is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moment 
anti clockwise moment is applied by this uh, horizontal force from the hinge y right so we don't know it we, we are going to find it right uh, now you might ask why don't we consider the vertical one right if we have a force like this we can resolve it into two forces vertical and horizontal right you don't need to worry about this one why this force the line of force distance from the line of force to the hinge x is zero so you don't need to worry about this vertical force right acting from the y hinge y so you don't need to worry about that one that's why i neglect that one i hope you understand this one we the distance from the force of line to the pivot is zero right here this is the force vertical force and if i make it clear you can't find any distance from the force of line to the pivot so it is zero and you don't need to worry about this force right here so it is fh fh times the distance to the force uh, line it is l l means 1.60 meters 1.60 meter so if you um, subject fh from this one what you will find over here is 37.5 right 37.5 newtons right so uh, here here they have given five marks so i'm going to uh, mention what are the points that they have given marks for using w equals mg one mark right and uh, to make this one w over two right here for this one one mark and use the moment of a force here i have taken it is fx one mark right one mark then again uh, clockwise moments equal to anti-clockwise moments here here one mark to make it right because the law is in equilibrium and for the final answer one mark right here the vertical component of the force of each hinge on the door is equal to half the weight of the door right a hinge y exerts a force f hinge y exerts a force f on the door at an angle theta to the vertical as shown determine the force f and the angle theta right what they have mentioned here is the vertical component of the force of each hinge on the door is equal to half the weight of the force which means yes we have a force over here let's call it f vertical and that is equal to the weight w right here this is not the w that they have given i will write that as mg right mg over 2 right the force mg over 2 now they are asking us to calculate what calculate the f, force of f and the angle theta right first thing what i'm going to do here is we can apply what pythagoras theorem right i'll show you here it is f h so if i draw a vector diagram right just to clarify what's going on over here right here we have f h f h right i will i will make it like this here f h and here it is f v and here you can get what the force of f so you need to apply pythagoras theorem and you should care be careful why here the angle over here is theta which means here the angle is theta we need to find theta also right so f is equal to what f h we already calculated this one f h square plus f v right square square root right ah then we already know fh what is fh fh is 37.5 we already calculated that one 37.5 newtons square plus and the vertical one they have mentioned it is uh, equal to the half of the weight right so it is mg over 2 which means 141 over 2 right square square root so if you calculate this one what you will get for your force of f is 80 newtons 80 newtons and 
to find theta right we can use simple trigonometry right tan theta o tan theta equals to what uh, here it is opposite over adjacent so it is f h over f v f h over f v right f h over f v i'm going to subject theta then it is equal to tan inverse f h the horizontal one we already know it is 37.5 right newtons then uh, the vertical one is 141 newtons over 2 right so if you uh, simplify this one you will get uh, 28 degrees for your theta right okay you had to mention those so here is 80 newtons and here it is 28 degrees right here an ideal dough is supported by hinges that are much closer together explain how a small value of l affects f and theta you should consider the moment about point x right if i read out the draw right to understand the question right here this is our way it does not change and now we have here it is y ne? here we have y and here x right now the l, l new l value is small right? it's called simple l for the sake of argument right and this value does not change here it is w over 2 right if i consider the moments around point x i can write what the right here mg will provide w i wrote it as w mg right i'll make it mg then it is much more here mg mg times what mg times w over 2 they do not change right exactly same values we had the we had in the previous question right mg times w over 2 now what about the y if i consider the horizontal force here we had the horizontal one right uh, f h right now f h we don't know right we have to give our comment on f h but now l is l has decreased now it is not capital l anymore right so it is simple l which means we have the same value on the left hand side as the previous value but in the right hand side right our l value is now decreased right so to make it equal to the previous value f h should be much larger than the previous value right i hope you understand right if we have a 10 right suppose we had 5 times 2 right and l, l is now going to 1 so obviously the f h should be 10 to be equal to 10 right like here then f h should be much larger right if f h is larger right here right i hope you remember the previous equations what f is equal to f h f h square plus f v square square root now f h is larger obviously f will increase and uh, i hope you remember the theta equation it is tan inverse f h over f h over f v then if h a f h is increased obviously theta will also increased right now we have to write the, down these points right they have given four marks right here i will write it over here uh right reduce this one right for the first point right mg times w over 2 equals f h times l right l for writing this one they have given one mark right here so so horizontal component 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 right uh, of force of force increases increases when l 
is decreases. Right? Um, next point one uh, vertical component of the force will remain same because it is W over 2. We had mentioned that one right here. We will have a vertical component over here, right? It will remain as the same, right? It is W over 2, right? W over 2 means mg over 2, right? We had mentioned that one, right? Vertical component of the force remains same. Right. The last one, what will happen to theta? Right. So, uh, F increases and theta increases. Right. These are the points that they expect from you in the marking scheme. Uh, Right, if you can answer it like in bit bit mathematical way, but you have to include these points in your marking scheme, in your I mean, answer. Sorry, right. So here it's one. Here it is one. Here it is one. 